Ever kid coming along fool enough to take up this crazy sport wanted to be the next Jim Ryan. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Analyzing the Greats, where we look at some of the greatest distance runners of all time, and we try to figure out exactly what made them so successful. In this episode, we'll be looking at Jim Ryan of the United States, who many consider to be the greatest high school track and field athlete of all time. And to give you an idea of just how revolutionary of a runner Jim Ryan was, ESPN.com named him the best high school athlete, not just runner, but the best high school athlete of all time, beating out people such as Tiger Woods and LeBron James. And that's some pretty impressive company. And to quote Mark Bloom, the former senior writer for Runner's World magazine, track was booming in the 1960s. Why? Jim Ryan. Over the course of his career, Ryan broke six world records, including two world records in the 800 meters, one world record in the 1500 meters, and three world records over the one mile distance. Additionally, Ryan was the first athlete to win the Track and Field Athlete of the Year award in two consecutive years. Honestly, as I was writing out my thoughts to describe Jim Ryan's influence on distance running, I literally found myself at a loss for words. I mean, his performances were so earth-shattering and so impossible to conceive, it really does seem like he was divinely created for running. And with a spectacular set of personal bests and a really sublime running resume, Ryan is appropriately nicknamed the Master of the Mile. All right, guys, let's go ahead and take a look at some of his greatest races, and let's see what we can learn. Then Jim Ryan's here. This is the epitome of what I love to see in a runner. He is super tall, super relaxed, his arm swing is perfectly timed, and notice how his foot lands directly under him. It literally looks like his head and his body are completely motionless, and yet his legs are just... Uh, it's just really incredible to see. This is a great, great quality video to look at Jim Ryan. And this record, this world record, stood for nine years, which is quite a long time. Uh, so, you know, this is really uh, showcasing his talent as a 20-year-old, considering he ran a 351 mile as a 20-year-old. Very incredible. So that's the first video we're taking a look at here. And, yeah, Jim Ryan's just, uh, he's just a freak of nature, man. It's really amazing to see. Uh, so the second video we are going to look at is actually a very, uh, I didn't know this video existed. This is, um, this is the 1965 Kansas High School State Meet Mile Run. And this is only, this is when he was 17 years of age. So this is 1965. Um, and the fact that this footage exists is even more incredible because this is a state meet. Modern day state meets rarely get footage, let alone 1965. Then again, Jim Ryan was pretty hyped. So, uh, yeah, I'm sure that that was the reason this is recorded so well, but Jim Ryan here, uh, this is the, f this is to date still the fastest mile ever run where the, where the competitors are only high schoolers. He runs a 358.3 here. And as you can see from his stride, he definitely improved his stride as he got a little older, um, but he still got an incredibly effortless, uh, as some people have said, schoolyard run. Uh, schoolyard style gate. I'm still not entirely sure how to how to categorize that, but uh, it's kind of accurate because it just does look like he's out just running against you know other uh, other people his age, but he just so happens to be doing it in extremely uh, extreme style. So, um, but uh, yeah, this uh, this is his senior year, and amazingly, uh, the year previous uh, in the summer, the summer of 1964. He actually was already an Olympian. So the summer going into his senior year, he already was an Olympian, uh, which is just amazing and truly incredible. Um, but one thing I've noticed is that in this video here, he does sort of have that head wobble that he sometimes has, um, kind of as just his style. But uh, you know, he he definitely did develop a little bit better technique as he got older. But right here, he's coming up on one lap to go. Uh, and if you'll notice, his, uh, I believe the second place competitor is only about 20 meters behind him. You'll be truly amazed just how far, how much gap he puts on the guy who's behind him. And I tried to look up who the person behind him was because he was actually pretty close to him, but I could not find out who he was. So if anyone knows, definitely let me know. It's, uh, I'm very interested in that. But look at him flying here. Senior year, absolutely rolling. And side note, this is actually a concrete track. So he doesn't have the advantage of modern day facilities and he still runs a 358. Imagine what he could have done if he had the shoe technology, the, the, just the know-how of what to train uh, and how to train as a, as a runner and the synthetic tracks that we have today. I bet he could have like run a 354, 353 like Alan Webb, who knows? 
but that really is an incredible race, and look how much distance he put on the guy behind him, I mean, come on. And the last video we're going to take a look at here is probably my favorite video of Jim Ryan. This is the 1965 AAU Mile, and what makes this so incredible is that he's competing against Peter Snell of New Zealand, who was actually the 1964 1500 meter gold medalist at the Olympics. So Peter Snell, uh, I would imagine he was thinking he was going to come into this race and not be challenged by a high schooler. But, um, you know, we'll see what happens in this race. I already know, but uh, I'm not going to ruin it for you. But let's just say Jim Ryan is um, incredible. Let's just say he does things that no other high schooler uh, really was able ever able to do, considering he's ESPN's uh, top-ranked high school athlete ever. It's, it's amazing. So, as you can see, he's actually in the back of the leading pack there. Peter Snell is wearing the all-dark. Um, he's the only athlete, I believe, wearing only dark and the dark tank top. Um, but with two laps to go, Jim Ryan's just kind of relaxed in the middle there. He's uh, getting ready to make his move. Um, but with 600 meters to go, my apologies for not knowing all these athletes, but we've got a break here. Um, gaps the field by just, you know, 5 to 10 meters. And with a lap to go, Ryan responds. And Peter Snell tries to pass Jim Ryan. And out of nowhere, Ryan makes this crazy acceleration. And I'm sure that surprised Peter Snell. He probably was not expecting that. However, Ryan actually makes a 300 meter kick and he really just puts himself out there as a high schooler it's amazing he's got Wichita written on the front of his uh, his jersey just kind of a uh, at least to Peter Snell a middle of nowhere place in Kansas where he certainly wouldn't expect a high schooler to be able to beat him and look at him just absolutely competing against the best in the world and somehow he is able to pull out this amazing final 100 meters and this was the Amazing 355 high school mile that stood for 36 years and it was finally broken by Alan Webb in 2001 But look at this finish Truly incredible an amazing high school runner and an amazing runner in general just just an amazing athlete All right, everybody, let's go ahead and give Jim Ryan a score and remember our scoring system is on a scale of 1 to 100 So let's go ahead and look at his results all right, so here are my thoughts. For running mechanics, I think he was just super smooth. You saw the video, really great style in running uh, with running, so gotta give him a 10. Mental toughness, I give him a 10 because I did some reading on him, uh, and although he was extremely talented, he worked really hard too, and you could see in the videos, he's capable of really digging super deep and bringing out that kick, so I give him a 10 there. And for kick, also, I obviously gave him a 10. He clearly has an amazing kick, out kicking Peter Snell, the 1964 Olympic champion, so I gave him a 10. Career longevity, I also gave him a 10 here because when he was in high school, he was doing incredible things. In 1964, as a junior, he was an Olympian, and he qualified for three Olympics, 1964, 68, and 72. And after 72, he uh, this was when the International Track Association was, um, was in existence. He joined that from 1972 to 1974. So as far as I'm concerned, he was really at uh, the height of his career for a long time, and uh, he was ranked in the top 10 uh, over the mile distance for more than, uh, I believe, 7-8 years, so I gave him a 10. Now for championship performances, however, I gave him an 8. I think he uh, just struggled a little bit with championship performances, especially the Olympics. Um, 1968 was really when he was at his peak, and uh, unfortunately in that event, Kip Kano beat him. Uh, because he just kind of outsmarted him. He ran away really early and really fast, and Jim Ryan just couldn't compete. Uh, really wasn't ready to respond, rather. He might have been able to compete, but he just didn't. And unfortunately, in 1972, sadly, Jim Ryan uh, was tripped uh, in the semifinals, I believe, and he never even qualified for the final because of that. Um, regardless, even though that was kind of an unlucky situation, I give him an 8 here because he only has one Olympic medal. Uh, in, in comparison to some of the greatest athletes of all time who have you know, upwards of six Olympic gold medals. <laughs> uh, I think that uh, I just couldn't give him a 10, so I give him an eight here. And running range, I gave him an uh, I gave him a nine here uh, because he, he he just does not have the range that uh, Haile Gebrselassie or Kennedy Bekele have. He just doesn't. Um, he was really talented in the 800 and the 1500, uh, and even the mile when he was 19, he ran or excuse me, even the two mile because he ran an 8:25 as a 19 year old. And he does have a 1338 5K, which was pretty good uh, uh, at the time, but 
Uh, he really never uh, never stepped up to the 10K or moved to the roads or things like that, and a lot of other athletes have. And remember, we're comparing athletes here, so we're kind of looking at how one would earn a 10. So I give him a 9 here. For tactical awareness, I also gave him a 9. I think he won a lot of races because he was extremely intelligent, but unfortunately, he lost a few races because he sort of lost his, uh, his running awareness uh, in 1968 in the Olympics. That's what happened, I believe. But most of the time, he really was aware of, it, aware, aware of his surroundings and provided some really good running, uh, running recommendations and styles for his races, so I gave him a 9. For personal bests, I obviously have to give him a 9 here. I mean, he broke so much ground as an amateur, um, broke six world records, uh, some of them indoors, uh, others outdoors, 144 for the 800, 351 for the mile, and a 355 mile as a high schooler. I mean, come on, like, really incredible. Same thing with records broken. I mean, he broke six world records. He broke that high school mile record. First high schooler ever under four minutes. Gotta give him a 10 for both of those. And lastly, adaptation. I gave him a 9 because over his career, you did see him sort of lowering in the ranks of the milers uh, throughout the world. Um, you know, he was on top of the world for at least three years, really, 1965 through 1967. I think those were his peak years, but um, give him a 9 here just because I couldn't give him a 10, really. And overall, that gives a, a score of 95 for Jim Ryan. Really incredible score. Um, and I really do wonder what he would have done in 1972 at the Olympics, because I think if he was able to pull that off, he would have gotten a higher score. Um, but, you know, honestly, if you'll watch some videos of him, he's taken that uh, experience and grown from it. He was actually a member of Congress for, uh, I believe, nine years. That's not really running related, but it's still pretty amazing. But 95 is a great score. That puts him up, uh, you know, as one of the all-time greats without question. And uh, I think he totally deserves it. And I would love to know what you guys think. Again, should he be higher? Should he be lower? Obviously, he's one of the greatest milers of all time, if not the greatest miler of all time, right near Hicham El Garouge and a few other runners, but, um, you know, this is the full picture of a distance runner, and I gave him a 95, so that's Jim Ryan. Really enjoyed looking at him. He's he's really a groundbreaking runner, a novel athlete, and as ESPN put him, uh, the greatest high school athlete of all time, so it was a true pleasure learning about him. And, yeah, guys, that's the video. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Uh, I would uh, love to get you guys uh, involved and see what runners you want me to look at. Um, so yeah, guys, thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video.